All right, so in some cases, we're gonna want to combine two or more arrays together. There's quite a few different ways that you could do this, but probably the most efficient is to use an array method called concat. So I'm gonna start out with a very simple example. I'm just gonna do const, let's go odd numbers. And I'm just gonna take the first few odd numbers. So let's start with one, then go three, then five, then seven, then let's go nine. Okay, so that's enough. Let's go const even numbers. And I'm just gonna start with zero and then go two, four, six, and then lastly eight. Okay, so if I wanted to merge these two arrays, I could do it in many different ways with concat. I'm gonna start by just going something like const all numbers, and I'm going to basically start with odd numbers. Okay, so that's gonna be first. I'm gonna type dot and then concat like this, and then some parentheses. So what goes inside the parentheses here is the array you wanna slap onto the end of this, okay? And it's going to basically go through and take all of these elements and then all of these elements, and it's gonna put them together in a nice array for you. Now the one that's out here first is gonna be first. So you're gonna see one, three, five, seven, nine first, and then the zero, two, four, six, eight, because it's inside of here is gonna be last. So let's go even numbers like this, okay? And let's go ahead and console.log this all numbers guy, and let's see what we get. So if we run this, we get the one, three, five, seven, nine first, that was your odd numbers. And then again, we put this on the end, we put the even numbers, the zero, two, four, six, eight. If you reverse the order of this, let's say you change this to even, and then you came over here and you change this to odd, okay? If you flip this open and clear and run, it changes it, right? So now you have the even numbers first and then followed by the odd numbers. Okay, so that's all as expected. Another thing you can do here, you can start with an empty array, okay? And then you can put dot concat like this, and then I can pass in the even numbers, and then I can just put a comma. So let me put a comma here, and then I'll put the odd numbers there, okay? And then if I open this up, basically it's going to do the same thing it just did. It's gonna start with the even numbers, it's gonna put on the odd numbers at the end. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this, and it's the same thing, okay? Once again, if you flip this around and you put the odd numbers here, and then you put the even numbers here, again, it's just going to flip that. So clear this and run this. You get one through nine first, and then zero through eight after. Now, one of the main things here, and you're gonna see this a lot with array methods, you need to know if it changes the original array or the original arrays that you're working with or not. In this case, it's not gonna change the original array. So this is gonna be really useful if, for example, we're working with a function, we need to take in two or more arrays and then return a merged array or something like that. So let me give you an example of this. Let me just write a function real quick. So I'll go function, and I'm just gonna call it concat. Okay, and I'm gonna type in array one, and then array two, and then array three. Okay, so let's just have three arrays in there. And what I wanna do here is just return. I'm going to maybe start with an empty array, and then I'll do dot concat, and then I'll pass in here array one, array two, and then array three. Okay, so the order that I put these in when I'm calling this function is gonna matter, right? Whatever I put in here first is gonna go first. And then whatever I put in second is gonna go second, so on and so forth. Now, let's set up some simple arrays. Let's say we do something like our grammar school friends, our high school friends, and then our college friends. So let's say we go const, we'll go grammar. Let me just put like G and then school friends like this, or maybe I'll abbreviate it even more. So GCF is just grammar school friends. And I'll say something like maybe Ricky, and then let's do Alan, and then let's do maybe like Kristen, and then let's do Sherry. Okay, so just four people, and let's go const, let's go high school friends. So this guy right here, let's just put in some names here, and I'll do something like maybe Beth, and then something like Mary, and let's also go Ben, and then I'll say something like Jenny, okay? So something like that. And let's do one more, so we'll go const, let's go college friends, and again, I'm just gonna put four names in here, so let's do Larry, let's do Heather, let's do maybe Jessica, Jessica, and they don't have to be the same length, so maybe we'll put five in here. So Megan, and then let's do something like Alvin, okay, something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this function. I'm gonna call the concat guy, okay, and I'm gonna pass in these three arrays, and because it's returning something, let's set this equal to a variable. So let's go const, I'll go all friends like this, and I'll call my function concat, okay, with gsf as the first one, hsf as the second one, and cf as the third one. Okay, so if we console.log this all friends, we're gonna see basically one big array with Ricky, Alan, Kristen, Sherry, Beth, Mary, Ben, Jenny, Larry, Heather, Jessica, Megan, and Alvin. Okay, so let's go ahead and console.log 
this all friends, okay, array. So let's clear this and let's run this guy. And again, it just merged all of them together and gave me a nice little array. If you want to play around with the for each method, you could do something like, let's say all friends dot for each, okay? And inside of here, again, you can put an anonymous function, you can do an arrow function, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to go function, an anonymous function here. And basically what I'll do from here, let's say that I pass this in, I'll say this is the element, okay? Or you could say friend if you want. So let's go friend. And I'll just say something like console.log. And I'll use some backticks here and I'll just say one of my friends from school is, and we'll go dollar sign curly braces and we'll just reference the friend. Okay, so something just real simple so we get some practice with this for each method. So we're just going through every element of the all friends, the array that we just created. So let's pop this open and clear this and let's run this. And you get all of them. It's a lengthy list, so you get one of my friends from school is Ricky, you know, so on and so forth. It goes through all of them. Okay, so let's get rid of this. So one thing if you're researching this, you might be thinking about how you can make a copy of an array. When you talk about copying an array, it's a complex topic. So I want to go into detail on this basically later on because there's different things that happen based on if you have an object or if you have a primitive value. If you go to the MDN page on this and you scroll down a little bit, there's a basic example here. But if you calm down here, I'm gonna link this in the description. It's gonna tell you about the object references, okay, and basically what it's gonna to refer to and things like that. It's a little bit advanced for us at this point, but let me show you something really quickly. So let's say we do something like const, I'll just say array one, and let's just make this one, two, and maybe like three and four, okay? And let's say I go const array two is equal to array one, okay, something like that. What happens is, let's say for example, I go ahead and go array one, okay? And then I use square brackets and then zero, and I'm gonna change this to hello, I have been changed. What's gonna happen is this is actually going to affect array one and array two, okay? So if I go down here and I console.log, array one, and then also array two, we'll see that both in the first position, it'll say, hello, I've been changed. So let's pop this open and clear this and run this. And you see you get, hello, I've been changed and hello, I've been changed, okay? So that is kind of an issue. If you wanted to do something like, let's say const array two is array one dot concat, okay? With parentheses there, you're not putting anything in there. What's gonna happen is now this is gonna have no effect on this, okay? So the array two in the first position, it'll say one, okay? And for array one, it's gonna have changed to this, hello, I have been changed. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this. And you see, we have hello, I've been changed. And for this one, it's one, two, three, four. Now I'm not yet ready to cover this in full detail yet. We just have a lot more stuff that we have to get to before this will make sense. Okay, so let's wipe this. And I have an example that you can basically take from the description box. So let me just paste all this in and let me explain what's going on here. So I'm setting up a class with the name of items. I have a constructor method in here with the item, the price, and the stock. So we know how to do this. This dot item is the item, this dot price is the price, and this dot stock is the stock. I have a method that I've put in here. So basically it's a description. It's gonna return Basically, this dot item, whatever it is, cost this dot price. We currently have this dot stock in our store. Okay, so again, you can just copy this from the description. You don't need to worry about pausing the video and trying to type it. And then what I did was I set up an array with the grocery items. Okay, so I just made four of them. We have bread, milk, steak, and rice. So the next guy is the price, and this guy is the on hand, basically, or the amount of stock we have in the store. Then I have the general items. So we have a broom. We have a microwave, a TV, and some paper. Again, here's the prices, and then the other guy is going to be the current stock level. Now, what I'll do here, just as a last example, I'm just gonna go const all items is gonna be equal to, let's just start with an empty array, and I'll put dot concat, okay, just to get some practice. And again, just pass in the grocery items, okay, and then the general items. So let's go ahead and console.log the all items array. Let's check that out real quick. Let's clear this and let's run this. And you see it just made it into one big array, right? So you have your bread, your milk, your steak, your rice, your broom, your microwave, your TV, and your paper. Now, one thing we can do before we wrap up the video is we can get a little practice with our for each method. 
So remember at the top here, I have this little method called description and it's gonna return a little string. Now it'd probably be better for this particular example to just console.log something. So, well, we can leave it like this. Let's just leave it like this and we'll do the console.log inside. So I'm gonna go all items dot for each like this. And basically what I'm going to do inside, I'm going to set up an anonymous function and I'm going to call this guy item. Okay. Again, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to say item dot description. Okay. So I'm calling that method, but the problem is it's going to return something and I'm not doing anything with it. Right? So this is a string that's being returned. So really I would have to save this somewhere, or I could just console.log the return value here. Okay. So basically that would get us where we need to go. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and let's run this guy. So this is as expected. We have bread cost $3. We currently have 30 in our store. Milk cost $4. We currently have 50 in our store, you know, so on and so forth, going through all the elements in our merged array.